Deneen here from Design by Witchy Denine. Welcome to the fantastic Halloween DIY collaboration hosted by the ghoulish Crafty Lini and a bewitching group of creatures who have all put together some DIY projects for your crafting pleasure. <laughs> I myself have waved my magic wand. Yeah, I stole this from Blender. And conjured up several amazing DIY projects that are so easy, even you could probably do them. I suggest that you like and comment on this video. You will subscribe to my channel if you know what's good for you. And your little dog, too! <laughs> I'm melting. For this project, I've got an 18 inch wreath form. This one's from Dollarama, and a larger one works better for this project. I used a couple of black feather boas. These are from Dollarama. These boas have a tie off on each end, so you want to tie off the first end onto one of the cross brace pieces. So we'll tie it off nice and tight, and then we just wrap over and over until we've covered off half of the wreath form. I use two boas, one boa on each half of the wreath. Once everything is attached, just even out the boas on either side. This piece is optional, but I did opt to add a fabric bow to the top of the wreath, which I attached using the wires on the back of the bow. Here is my super cool raven, or he may just be an ordinary crow. In any case, he's pretty cool. He's from Dollarama and I like him a lot. They had another version that was larger and it was very plasticky, but I like this one because he's kind of feathery and he looks pretty cool. I applied hot glue to his legs and attached him to the wire wreath like that. So we're gonna add a little bit of flowers to our wreath and I grabbed this batch from the dollar store and it has black roses with black leaves and some iridescent green spiders. So the black roses by themselves don't have enough contrast so I'm using my very favorite extreme glitter paint by Folk Art. So I just added a little bit of glitter to the edges of the flower petals just with a small artist's brush and just brushing it onto the edges to give them some added bling. So here is what the flowers looked like before, and here is what they look like after with the addition of the Extreme Glitter paint. And it matches pretty much perfectly with the spiders that came with the flowers. And now we're just gonna add some flowers and some spiders to our wreath. Oh, and of course, I'm going to add my awesome raven to the middle of the wreath as well. Whenever I'm working on a wreath um, or something that has pieces that are glued down, I usually muck around with where I want things placed before I glue anything. I usually do all my placement and then I go back and I glue things in place once I've got everything where I want it. So here's the completed wreath and I think the feathers help to make it look a little bit more creepy, the way they kind of drip a little bit. And I love my raven or my crow. This project starts off with a Dollar Tree pink plastic flamingo. Add a coat of flat black paint. And you're almost finished the project. <laughs> Seriously, it's about that easy. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna add some nice red ruby eyes to our zombie flamingo. These gems are from Dollarama and came in a three pack. And you, if you can't find gems that are similar to these, you can always just paint your eyes red. Initially, I was gonna go with the larger, more oval shaped eyes because I thought you'd see them better from further away. However, I found that the smaller, more almond shaped ones looked a little bit more evil and menacing. 
So this is an easy one. You just attach these on with a little bit of E6000, um, put them in place and let them dry. So the only other piece to this project is just to paint those little metal legs in a coat of flat black, but you could also just leave the metal in, it would be fine. So here's our really cool zombie flamingo. He kind of looks like a vulture and I think he's awesome. Here's another super easy DIY project for you. This star foam skull is from Dollarama. It comes with lights that flash. So the skull looked pretty cool the way it came. It had some, um, some nice dimensional shading to it. So you can see here that my original drawings are underneath the coat of white paint. Um, I didn't film it. I was just sort of doodling around on it to see if I liked the way it came out. And I did like most of it. Um, but I wanted to show you what I had done so I gave it a coat of white paint actually two coats of white paint all over and now I'm just going to use a black sharpie and retrace the parts that I like and change the parts that I didn't like. So this is kind of in the style of sort of Day of the Dead. Um, it's also in a similar style to a skull that I saw at HomeSense and I'll plop a picture in. And all I wanted to do was just draw some designs around the face. And I think the big trick when you're doing this is to just keep things even from side to side. So I used like a couple diamonds over the top of the nose and then sort of like a flower shape over the top of the eyes. And my favorite little swirls that I tend to use in a lot of things that I do. And yeah, as I said, just keep it symmetrical so it's the same from side to side and that makes it look the best. So I was pretty pleased with the way the top portion of the skull came out above the eye area. However, I wasn't super happy with this sort of upper lip area here. Um, the reason being that the areas where I did like a little sort of a swirly design here uh, kind of made it look like a mustache. And in my opinion, this is a girl skull, so she doesn't want to have a mustache. So instead of doing swirls, I opted for a kind of a flower pattern, which is similar to what I've done above the eyes to tie that in. I also decided to outline the teeth like they were originally and this is super easy to do because they were already sort of indented so I basically just had to run the sharpie through the indented lines and bring the teeth back out. Next we give her a floral crown. You could use any colors you like here. I just picked through my bin of florals and I pulled out these in sort of versions of pink and white and that's what I went with. I used hot glue to attach these and this one didn't really have a stem so I just glued it directly onto the top. The other ones had um, a little bit of a stem sticking out so I actually poked a hole into the skull with the stem and then I filled the hole with hot glue and placed the flower. And then I added a final fourth flower onto the back using the same method. This is a leftover piece of MDF plywood that I had. It is about four inches wide by about 20 inches long. And you could very easily just use a piece of leftover two by four for this. Just cut it off to 20 inches. I am also using 
um, wine glass bottoms. These are from Dollar Tree and they come on many of their glasses. There are wine glasses and there are, I think these are martini glasses. And I've just used the bottom section and we will need five of these. Here are all of the dimensions and I will also provide these in the description box below. I also used five dowels for this project and these dowels are fairly thick. The size that you're gonna need is gonna be just the right size to tuck into the bottom section of the wine glass bottom. I used a drill to drill the holes into the pre-marked wood for my dowels and I would suggest first testing it out on a different piece of wood and make sure that it fits, which I have already done. Also, since I'm gonna be drilling right through this piece of wood, I opted to put a piece of two x four underneath it so I didn't drill into my floor. The center dowel is 10 inches long with the other four being two at eight inches and two at six inches. I used my miter shears to cut them to size after they were measured. I did make a mistake when I was doing this and I drilled a hole in the wrong spot, but if you managed to do that too, no worries. I just filled it with some wood filler and then after it dried, I just sanded it off. This is the base with the dowels in place. They're not glued in yet, they're just sitting in there. And as you can see, a couple of them are leaning a little bit crooked, so we're gonna straighten those up when we glue them in place. But the next step is we're gonna paint the whole thing in a coat of flat black paint. Boom, and just like that, it's all black. So I painted it with the dowels in place. I haven't yet uh, fastened in all the dowels at this point, they're just sitting in there for painting. And as you can see, they're flush with the bottom. These are the super cool baby doll heads that I am using for this project. I have five of them. They came from Dollarama. I believe they also have a similar style at Walmart in case you don't have a Dollarama. And I don't even think I'm gonna paint them or anything. I kinda like them just the way they are. As you can see, the bottom section of the wine glass fits absolutely perfectly over the opening of the baby doll head. However, we won't be able to glue them in place or we would not be able to get the flickering tea lights in there. So I'll figure out something for that later. And now it's time to glue all those dowels in place so that nothing wiggles around. So I'm just gonna use like a little dollop of hot glue and I'm gonna put it right into the hole that I drilled out. And then I'm gonna put this dowel back in. And then you wanna make sure that you've got it straight while it's drying and you wanna hold it in place until it's dry. And that doesn't take very long with hot glue, probably like 10 seconds. And we repeat that process with all, all of the dowels until they are all nice and straight. Now it's time to add the foot of the wine glass onto the top to act as our base. So just add a dollop of hot glue into the recessed area on the bottom and then put it onto the dowel. And then this part's important. You wanna make sure that it's completely level when it's drying. So put it, I would set it back down and then just make sure it's nice and level. But if it's not, no biggie. It's easy to pull these off, pick out the hot glue and do them over, but best to do them right the first time. So here's our candelabra and you can totally reuse this after Halloween and just put regular candles on it. So here's the part that makes it totally creepy. We're gonna add, first we're gonna add these little um, LED flameless candles that I got at the dollar store. Um, I would have really have preferred to have gotten them in red, but I couldn't find red. So we're just gonna settle for orange, which is also good in Halloween-y. And here they are looking all creepy, like all of those Halloween movies that I never watch because they're too scary. So let's flick out the lights and see how they work. Looks pretty good. So as I mentioned earlier, because the doll heads are not glued down to the bases, you might see a little bit of light coming through the bottom section. And I'm okay with that, but if you wanna fix that, I'm gonna show you how. So the bottom of the doll heads have a nice flat section and I'm just gonna take this Dollar Tree double-sided tape. 
So I've just cut little sections of it and put it all the way around the edge of the bottom of the head. And then once you peel it off, you've got this sticky double-sided tape. It's a little bit hard to see, but if I move it in the light, you can kind of see. I've just got a few little chunks around the edge of the doll head. And then once you stick it onto the base, it will stick nicely down. And you shouldn't have any little bits of light showing through the bottom anymore.